With a paper fortune of $20 million, Chris O'Shea could own this super yacht. What would you call this boat if you bought it? Renee. Renee. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, Chris has better things to spend his millions on. Buying more of the cryptocurrency that's turned this former pub manager from Mount Druitt in Sydney's western suburbs into the richest young man he knows. And he's certainly got the attitude to match. What do you say to the sceptics who claim that this is all a bubble and you're <laughs> heading for doom? I mean, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> 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 Stephen Lenoci is another Bitcoin wannabe. Bondi Beach boy pulling three grand a week from a cryptocurrency investment he doesn't quite seem to understand. What happens if it all goes bust? It all goes bust. Yeah, I don't know, I've, I haven't really thought about that. And then there's Sam Karajosis. Life in a Bentley, mate. Come on, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> if his Bentley and his Mr. Bitcoin number plates don't give it away, then the tattoos on his knuckles will. He's launched his very own cryptocurrency, Ozcoin. What's Ozcoin? Ozcoin is the future of currency in, in Australia. Three players in a cryptocurrency game that will have many losers, including what's possibly an $80 million scam. Can you explain why people who've been critical of Ozcoin have been subjected to threats and intimidation? And the threats that come from trying to expose it. Shut your little f***ing mind for one second and listen to me, you dumb f***ing right? Essentially, Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies uh, like buying shares in nothing. Each is issued by a company, pretty much hoping that you'll bet on them and buy their crypto coin. The value is then determined solely by speculation. Lots of people buying in drives the value up. A sell-off makes it plummet. But the money, and it is real money, being generated by all of this speculation ends up providing startup funding for plenty of legitimate companies. Sum up cryptocurrency for me in 20 seconds. Cryptocurrency is like the new internet. Full stop. Craig Cobb is an old fashioned trader. The answer is yes. Who studied market trends for decades and is convinced the space to be in right now is cryptocurrency. He's taken to this emerging market with evangelical zeal. So when you say it's the new internet, what do you mean by that? Well, think of it this way, right? Can we live without the internet now? Probably not. When the internet came out, what was it? Uh, everyone's saying it won't take off. No one will be connected to the computers. Nothing will work. It won't do this, it won't do that. But when it did catch on, the whole world adopted it, bam. Craig says it's a lot like the dot-com boom and bust of the 1990s. Hype around new technology drove worthless companies into the stratosphere. Millions lost their money though when it all came crashing down. But from the dot-com ruins rose the titans of today's global economy. Like Amazon, eBay and Google. And so he says it will go with cryptocurrency. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has given us an investment tool where a thousand bucks can be a hundred thousand bucks in a year. Like that's a reality. It, it, it's happened, it's happening, and it will happen again. So it's giving power back to the younger generation and it's, we're all sick of it. Old people making decisions that we have to live with. Well, now we're making those decisions and I think we're taking some of that power back. To the disbelief of his family, Chris O'Shea sank $10,000 into Bitcoin in 2013. He's now turned it into $20 million. 
When you told your parents you were taking Bitcoin seriously, did they just shake their head and say? Oh. <laughs> Pretty much the family, all the family, friends. They were like, what are you doing with this internet currency? Like, it's, it's, it's shit. <laughs> 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 it's like, what are you wasting your money on this crap for? <laughs> and I was like, okay. You've had the last laugh on them, though? Sure have now. <laughs> oh, my God. Chris studied the market and got out of Bitcoin when the masses were buying in. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Then he started investing in other cryptocurrencies worth a fraction of a fraction of a cent, with names like Ripple, Ethereum and Syscoin. Then the crypto world exploded. It just literally started skyrocketing and then I was in the hotel with my girlfriend and I just seen you know, the value of it going up by 10, 10 grand, by 20 grand, by 30, by 50 grand. And I was like, I jumped into the shower and I was like, tell me when it's at like $100,000. going to 23. Chris has cashed out a few hundred thousand at this stage, putting some of his real world profits into funding a burger bar with his girlfriend, Renee. Told you mine looked better. Mine's takeaway. <laughs> The general public have the right to know what's going on right now because it is life changing if you allow it to be. We're changing the world, okay? There are things that are occurring that will make things different for everyone forever. I want people to start to understand that now's their chance. Cryptocurrency is a roller coaster. And the industry wants you to hear all about the highs, tempting potential investors to get on board. It's the classic get rich quick script. But as is so often the case, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Hello. <laughs> a year ago, Stephen Lenoci was a construction worker. These days, he promotes himself as a Bitcoin guru. Yeah, flick my job. Never look back, really. Yeah. I read an article saying you're going to be a millionaire by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, it's, I feel, I feel it's true, that article. I feel it's on the way. Yeah, I feel, I feel nothing can stop me at this point. The trouble for Stephen is that he's spruiking to his thousands of followers that they should sign up with him to a Bitcoin scheme called USI Tech. You know it's a Ponzi scam and a, and a pyramid scheme. Yeah, um, yeah I, don't, I don't know what a Ponzi scam is. Sadly for Stephen, the authorities do. US and Canadian regulators have pulled no punches in slamming US iTech, recently issuing cease and desist orders against the company for being a pyramid scheme, which we have now passed on to Stephen. So you'd profit directly from encouraging other people to invest in US iTech? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good reason for you to ignore the fact that it's a pyramid scheme, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it was, you could call it a pyramid scheme, but... I could, they could. Yeah. The US authorities, the Canadian authorities. <laughs> yeah. You're not worried? No, I'm not worried. Well... You're, you're directly profiting from funneling people into a pyramid scheme. Yeah, but okay. So if the, it goes both ways, then they they get in get into USI Tech. Whoever they sign up under them, they profit as well. That's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah, I know what a pyramid scheme is. Yeah. All right, no worries. We'll move on from that. The um, so <laughs> that was good. That was good. But it gets plenty worse than this. Shut your little mind for one second and listen to me, you dumb right? Coming up, the new cryptocurrency trying to get $80 million out of Aussie investors. Can you explain why people who've been critical of Auscoin have been subjected to threats and intimidation? We reveal the dubious dealings of Auscoin. 60 minutes, everybody! <laughs> Sam Karajosis isn't afraid to flaunt his wealth. 
as we discovered when we first began filming with him. And he told us this is just the tip of the iceberg because he was about to launch his very own cryptocurrency, Ozcoin. What's Ozcoin? Ozcoin is the future of currency in, in Australia. Sam hopes Ozcoin will reap him an eye-watering $80 million from mum and dad investors. Trouble is, as you'll see, the only value Ozcoin has is blind faith, as Sam almost accidentally revealed to us. So you buy the coin, then when it goes up and you're happy with your return, yep. you have to sell it. But when you talk about the appreciation on it, yep. that's assuming that it will appreciate. Yes. But what if it depreciates? Doesn't, well, that's part of life. It was Sam's assumption that Ozcoin would skyrocket in value that made us dig deeper into whether it's actually one of the many cryptocurrencies out there that investors should be wary of. People hype it up and say you can't lose, but the point I'm making is you can lose and some people will lose. And lose big. Lose big, lose very big. Steve Worthington from Swinburne University says the frenzy to make easy money is fertile ground for scammers targeting ordinary investors who've got next to no idea how cryptocurrency actually works. I feel like it's a, a Ponzi scheme in many ways where people, people are encouraged to put money in and those at the top who know what they're doing will take that money away at the top of the pile and leave everybody else scrambling around. Sam and his associates have been delivering the hard sell around the country to potential investors on how they could strike it rich with Ozcoin. You know, I've checked Litecoin because I'm checking all of them and they hit like two or three hundred bucks. Ozcoin's entire business plan is based on establishing a network of 1,200 cryptocurrency ATMs around the country. Ozcoin is set to roll out 1,200 ATMs throughout the Australian and Asian Pacific region. It's an astonishing claim, given that there are only 2,000 of these specialist machines in the entire world. Our investigation uncovered that Ozcoin's claim is a lie. We tracked down their ATM supplier, Genesis Coin, whose CEO, Evan Rose, told us Ozcoin has purchased just 34 machines from him a fraction of what they promise their investors. We don't have any pending orders for 1,200 machines. We simply do not have the capacity to handle that size of order. We've sold a little over 1,200 in five years. Yes. Oh yeah, Tom Steinford from 60 Minutes. So we confronted uh, Sam along with his Ozcoin partner, yeah, Michael Sloggett at their most recent investor information night in Perth. And the truth quickly came out. You have a deal signed for 1,200 ATMs? Definitely not. Definitely not. But that's your big sell to everyone tonight. Well, no, hold on. What I've tried to communicate to people is the vision of where we're going. Now, if we can do 40, we can definitely do 1,200. His admission to us is a massive back down from the grandiose promises they've made to investors. We currently already have a purchase order pending for the remaining ATMs. Ozcoin's management have feared their money grab is unravelling for some weeks now and have taken to intimidation to try to stop them being exposed. Shut your little f in mind for one second and listen to me, you dumb f right? This is a phone call from Ozcoin director Sean Harris to an Ozcoin critic. You have now officially with the wrong group of people. Don't think for one single second that we're not all over you. There have also been threats delivered via text message to those who've criticised Ozcoin. Kiss your ass goodbye, homeboy, you f***ing little faggot. Can you explain why people who've been critical of Ozcoin have been subjected to threats and intimidation and why you've offered to pay people off to stop investigating Ozcoin? There has been... 
Yeah, there's been a scenario where I've been extremely threatened. I've had people... No, I'm asking... Hold on, let, let the man... Guys, please, let, let him speak. He's entitled to ask his questions. And these people are wanting to invest money, so they're important yeah, questions no, Sam, that need please, to be answered. Please, yeah, there were no answers that made sense that night. But while they remain silent, there are plenty of others who aren't pulling their punches. What do you make of Auscoin? I'm not going to say it's a scam or if it isn't a scam, slash I am, it's a scam. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's a money grab. And at the end of the day, like, you know, it gives, it gives crypto a bad name. I think it's inevitably going to end in a, in a bust, as many of the previous bubbles have around the world. And I think for many people, it will end in tears. But despite conceding that the crypto bubble will probably burst at some stage in the short term and take the bad players with it, many still believe a new dawn of investment and potential riches is upon us. People haven't missed the boat? Absolutely not, man. This is a very exciting time to be alive. We've all got a chance. A lot of space on the boat? There's a lot of space on the boat. The boat's getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.